morning, everyone. Uh, I thank you for your patience. First day under the new system, commuting from uh, St. Peter's and Godrich. I'm glad to see all of you as we uh, celebrate on this Labor Day. We pray God's uh, safety and blessings upon all our labors. We'll have the first three verses of our hymn canted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Uh, my sisters, my brothers, on this uh, holiday, we're going to take a little kind of uh, detour. Instead of the Mass of the Day or the Mass for Labor Day that the bishops have uh, put together, we're going to be uh, offering a votive Mass of Thanksgiving uh, for my years here and uh, we'll seek God's blessing upon Father Tony, Father Vince, myself, and our team as we move forward as a, a family of parishes. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that is not found even among the pagans. For a man is living with his father's wife, and you are arrogant. Should you not rather have mourned, so that he who has done this would have been removed from among you? For though absent in body, I am present in spirit. And as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled and my spirit is present with the power of the Lord Jesus, 
you are to hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not a good thing. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens the whole patch of dough? Clean out the old yeast so that you may be a new, new batch, as you really are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the festival, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. Lead me. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. And there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though Jesus knew what they were thinking, he said to the man with the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to him, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, Jesus said to him, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Sorry for the confusion. Anytime you choose option C, there's always room for error. I put the wrong psalm response up uh, for our text today. These are the actual readings of Monday of this week, but as I mentioned, we're doing a votive mass of thanksgiving. I'm trying to honor your intent, your intent uh, by having a mass of thanksgiving uh, for my time here as your pastor. 
I think this is one of the things we agree to disagree on. I think Massive should be an intercession asking God for something. So I'm hoping somebody here gives up their beer and smokes money and has a Mass next Monday for Father Tony's intentions and blessings upon his years of fruitful ministry among us. Any time we say Thanksgiving, I think implicitly we're asking for God's continued blessings. The Mass is us asking God. We celebrate what God has done in Christ, but I think ultimately we're asking God for something. And it troubles me not to do the Mass for labor. You know that, well, here's something funny I have to tell you. The Fusco Brothers is a comic strip from the United States. It's three brothers and their pet wolverine, an albino wolverine. He's not a scary killer, mutant albino. He's your average friendly cartoon talking albino wolverine. And they ask him once, what is Arbor Day? And the, uh, the Wolverine says, Arbor Day is pig Latin for Darber. Do I have to explain everything to you? So what is Labor Day? Um, you know how mightily the United States struggles each year with Martin Luther King Day. And everyone insists this is not a day off. This is a day to do something for racial justice the way that Martin Luther King Jr. dedicated his life. So on this Labor Day, I would like us to be thinking especially about workplace safety. Because you know, in our era, in our time, in our mindset, all we think about when we talk about labor is big bad unions and the power they have. But you must be aware, I mean this was a shocker to me when I learned it years ago, that the amount of work and wealth uh, that is lost to uh, collective bargaining uh, struggles, or, you know, uh, arguments, disputes, is nothing in comparison to the life and money that's lost in workplace safety. The factor that they dwarfs it by is remarkable. And yet you and I will never hear about any kind of workplace safety initiative. People in Canada are still more likely to die at work than anywhere else. This is, I just, I'm so scandalized by that. And what is wrong with our system that we can't even talk about workplace safety inspection without thinking, oh, is someone trying to game the system here? Is there some kind of, you know, subterfuge being played? The simple reality is that our system, our economic liberal system, neoliberal, whatever, however we wish to label it, label it, cannot speak intelligently about keeping people alive. All we talk about is profit. All we talk about is return. Excuse me. Maximizing our investment. There's something fundamentally wrong if we can't talk about and think about a situation where people's lives are being lost when we have these little minor concerns that dwarf the, the discussion. Please make today a day, not a day off, but a day that we do something to keep our brothers, our sisters, our neighbors uh, safe, at least safe in their workplace. So, we need to expand the notion of thankfulness. Uh, I'm glad for my years here as your pastor. I think we absolutely must do something to demarcate this, this era. The era of Father Matthew as your pastor is done. The new era of Father Tony must begin. Um, and under the unforgiving eye of the internet, I'm glad to make that public statement. So, uh, now we think of the family of parishes. I thank God for my time here. Don't think I wrecked the place. The church is still here. You're all still here. Good. We must have done something right together. Uh, I don't know if we are that community of mature disciples, missionary disciples, 
but I'm convinced we are at least open to it, that God is calling us, that we're no longer asking what I can get away with, what, what, does the, what can we do, rather, what can I do for the gospel today, this month, this year? And if we can get our community, our larger community, to ask that question, then I know we will be truly thankful and we will be moving towards that, that fuller reality, that fullness of life that Jesus calls us to. One simple thing on work I want to share with you today, as I've been going through my books and thinning them out and ah, getting rid of so many resources that I simply haven't needed in the last six years, um, I've come across one of Father Michael Ryan's first little uh, pamphlets, Work in God's Plan. He talks about, this is before even John Paul II was writing about it as human beings, as workers. That we identify ourselves as workers. This is not just something we do, rather it's something we find our identity in. This is how we realize ourselves, this is how I become a person. Work is a huge part of that. My work shapes me as an individual, as I exist in the world. And this is my question. Now as we move towards a post-work society, there simply won't be jobs for everyone. As we understand that reality, what will the church do? How will we un help people understand themselves? to find their value not in what they do, but in who they are. Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Is it, is it okay to do right or to do harm on the Sabbath? And you know the religious people are just waiting for him to cross the line. You worked on the Sabbath, you broke the Sabbath law, you cannot be a respecter of God. That was the religious ex reaction to Jesus. We must find this new way. Jesus recognized this child of God and was meant to be set free. Stretch forth your hand. That's what God says in the face of suffering, in the face of, of fear, in the face of presumption. God says, stretch out your hand. On this Labor Day, on uh, this day of uh, taking stock of my years here and now, Father Tony's years among us uh, coming to, in the future, I pray that we will have that same response, that same Christ-like, God-like response in the midst of confusion or change or challenge. We say, stretch out your hand. Please stand. We pray for the church throughout the world, for our Holy Father the Pope, for all bishops, for all who lead us, for Father Tony, our pastor, that God will heal his church and his world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all who labor to feed us, to keep us safe and healthy, to keep our society running, that God will bless all workers with prosperity and peace and safety in their jobs, we pray to the Lord. Uh, we pray for our family of parishes, for our six parishes, our schools, our families, our communities. Uh, that our church might be a healing presence in Huron County, we pray to the Lord. We pray in thanksgiving for my years here in St. Boniface and St. Peter, St. Joseph. God will continue to build up our communities in faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our sick, those who suffer in body or mind. Especially those struggling with COVID-19 in Peel region. 
for all the sick and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died, especially Father John Pluto. God will give all his faithful departed servants eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, your blessings, your goodness moves our hearts to give you thankful praise. Continue to pour out your blessings upon us and make us your family of faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which your earth has given, human hands have made it, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness, we may give back to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, me, your priest, uh, Father Tony, Father Vince, Deacon John, Deacon Fred, all those who will minister to your people in our Lake Huron Catholic family of parishes. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it, accept, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants of Father John Pluta, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the power, the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. O God, who have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that, being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Here's what I wanted to preach on. 3, 5, 8, 11, 14, 15, 16. The system works. Thanks be to God. Last night I was going to bed early because I knew I had to work today. Um, and uh, someone came knocking to the door. Their mother was dying at the hospital. In the, the old system, on a long weekend, I would get the hell out of Dodge. But because we're a team now, Father Vince, Father Tony having their day off on Monday, mine being Friday, this poor woman was given the commendation of the dying and the consolation of her faith, and her family was better because, as a result. I want 16 of us to make an act of thanksgiving sometime today for that blessed moment, but also to tell somebody during the week the family of parishes already has borne fruit because someone was ministered to who otherwise would not have got it. Please let's be serious and intentionable about moving into this new era of uh, being one family of parishes. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall